be here for the very first time this morning, and you, you know you're so welcome. Each week, as part of our church our service worship together, we spend some time looking at what God says to us in the Bible, and we go through different things. But at the moment, we really felt that we wanted to to look at some big issues that uh, not only that uh, we're facing and the world is facing, but actually God is interested in. So. Last week, Tim did a fantastic story about actually how God cares about you as an individual. And as he prayed in our worship time this morning uh, about how Jesus came, he demonstrated it by coming. God came on this planet. Jesus came, lived, died, rose again. Uh, And I encourage you to go on YouTube or onto our website and listen to uh, that talk. So... Last week, uh, we were looking at that. Um, Next week, Julia's coming, and uh, she's going to be talking about how God cares about justice. Uh, She works for an organization called Justice and Care, and really did that Atlantic road to raise awareness of the millions of people trapped in human slavery. And she just has a fascinating story. So next week, I'll be interviewing her and encourage you to come back to one of our services. The following week... Jim is going to be uh, uh, really looking at the whole aspect of how God cares about politics. If ever there was a live topic to look at, and yes, he does need your prayers <laughs> for that one. If ever there was a live topic to look at, that is certainly you know uh, one that we're going to be looking at. But this week, I'm really, really thrilled that we're going to be focusing on how God cares about this planet, the environment, how he cares about people in this planet. And uh, originally, when we we looked at this um, as an eldership team, we felt there was only one person equipped uh, to speak on this, and that's my daughter, Lucy. And uh, so we we had this conversation about it, and she was like, oh, Dad, I I, I don't know, uh, but no, you'd be brilliant, and... So I said, look, I'll do as much of this talk as as you want, but really secretly, I wanted her to do all of it. Um, But, you know, I'm a dad. I'm caring. Uh, Am I? I don't know. She's saying no. Uh, (laughs) Funny thing was, last week, Lucy came to church. She was going to say to Tim, Tim, I don't know about doing this talk next week. And you announced it, didn't you, (laughs) that she was doing it. But... um, a little bit of background, uh, Lucy not only is passionate about uh, these issues, global issues, the environment, but also professionally she works now uh, for a Christian charity called Tear Fund that really at the, at the pointy end of seeking to uh, help people around the world, uh, help the environment, help with justice uh, from a Christian's uh, viewpoint. So Lucy's part of the team there, she works in communications for them. And I am thrilled to welcome you this morning, Luce. Come on up. Thanks. <laughs> I'm on. I can hear myself. Um, great. Guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to chat to you guys about... Uh, God's care for creation, and it's something that I'm really passionate about. So first off, uh, I just want to share a little bit of my story of how, um, how my passion for caring for creation came about, really. Uh, so when I was 17, I went to Hayes Heath College. Hands up here, anyone who went to Hayes Heath College? I see some OG members here, some originals. This is great. Um, yeah, so I went to Hayes Heath College, and that's where I studied my A-levels. Uh, and one of the topics that I studied was geography. Um, And actually, studying geography at A-level was where my passion for the environment and creation really kind of started and kicked off. Um, So I remember remember sitting in the classroom, and um, we started looking at topics that I'd never really thought about before. Um, And the two two main topics that I kind of focused on for uh, my coursework were uh, food insecurity and looking at kind of conflict surrounding water sources. Um, And I remember I I began to learn about Um, the reasons behind these things, actually what was causing people to not have enough food and not have enough water to drink. Um, And actually what's causing them massively is climate change and actually the overconsumption of uh, the world's resources. 
I remember reading stories about people's water sources drying up because the water was being drained to feed cotton plants that make the clothes that I wear, or rainforests being cut down and destroyed and people being um, removed from their homes because it's being made way for farmland that produces beef that ends up in the shop down the road. And one day, after one of my geography lessons, um, I, just, I came home and I remember walking through the door and seeing my parents, and I just remember like, breaking down and sobbing because the weight of the suffering that I was learning about just completely overwhelmed me. And I began to ask this question, why do I have so much when so many people have so little? But it also sparked another question in me, and that question was, what's God asking me to do about it? Um, so for me, it was really the start of a journey of thinking about how do my, uh, my actions and my impact on the world, how do they affect other people? How does the, the resources that I use, how does that have an impact on people around the world and on God's creation? Um, and I began to realize that if I get upset about injustice and climate change and the overconsumption of resources um, that cause massive damage to creation and the people living in it, then how much more must it pain God for him to watch us dis destroy his creation and exploit the poorest people in society in the process. Man, that is definitely something that God cares about. God cares about creation and he cares about the people who live in it. Um, so what I want to do today is I want to take a quick look um, at what God actually says about caring for creation, um, why it's important and what we can do to be part of this mission that God's called us to, to, to care for his creation. Um, so let me go on to the next slide. Um, so this is how I'm hoping you guys are all going to feel by the end of my talk, this little running man doing his little run. Um, so these are the things that I'm hoping to get out of the talk today. Um, so I want you guys to be challenged. I do want this to challenge you guys. I want it to make you think about um, what responsibility we have and what part that we need to play. Um, but I also want it to encourage us. I want it to... Um, I don't want it to be heavy, and I don't want to make you guys feel guilty. Actually, this is about giving you vision to see um, how we can be welcomed into this mission that God's called us to. And actually, I want you guys to leave feeling excited about what you can do to care for the amazing planet that God's given us. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to look at. Um, so the first question you might be asking is actually, why should we care about the environment? Um, and my, my answer to this is actually really simple. It's actually the title of this series that we're looking at. Uh, the reason we should care about creation is because God cares about it. Like, simple as that. Um, so what I want to do over the next couple of minutes is I want to have a little look at actually what does God say about caring for creation. Um, and we're going to have a little look at some of the Bible, some Bible verses to back that up, um, and just unpack that a little bit more. So, brilliant. Um, so I think for me, one of the simplest reasons to care for creation is because God's asked us to. Um, and in Genesis 1, which is the first book of the Bible, um, we read about the intricate way that God has created our beautiful planet. And then God gives us this incredible job. As humans, he gives us an amazing job. And I want to just read a little bit from Genesis that talks about this job that God's given us. Uh, I think it's up on the screen as well. So it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then I think this is the crazy bit. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And that is from Genesis chapter 1. So God describes this world that he's created not just as good, but as very good. And I feel like from God's point of view, describing something as very good is a pretty big deal. Um, and then actually he gives us human beings the privilege of taking care of his creation. He commissions us and calls us and said, I've made this beautiful planet, but actually I want you guys to look after it. I want you to rule over it. I want you to care for it. Which I just think, it blows my mind. What an amazing privilege that God has given us that job to look after his creation. Um, so that's my first reason. Really simple. Right at the beginning of God's word, he says, I've given you creation to take care of. My next reason is that um, caring for the planet honors God. And this is, this is one of the things that I feel so passionate about, actually. Um, and at church, we often talk about worship. And when you guys think of worship, um, maybe what you picture is what we've done this morning, which is kind of gathering together in a church building and singing songs um, and praising God's name through singing and worship. 
Um, and actually, that's a really great expression of worshipping God, and I really love doing that. Um, but worshipping is so much more than just singing on a Sunday. Actually, worshipping and honouring God is using our, live and our, using our lives and our actions to honour him. Um, and I believe that one of the, the key ways that we can honour God is by looking after the earth he has created. So um, my grandparents have a house down in Devon, and we often go down there to go on holiday. Um, and it's a really beautiful part of the world. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Devon, but um, it's really near the beach, and it's, it's really lovely, and we often go there for holidays. And my grandparents were so kind in letting us use uh, their house and their space. Um, but what I want you to imagine for a second is um, that we've gone down to my grandparents' house, um, and they've gone away, actually. They're not there. They're staying somewhere else for the week. Um, and we've gone down as a family. Um, but we've decided, actually, we're going to completely trash their house. So I'm talking, uh, we're going to keep our shoes on, we're going to walk our muddy footprints into their nice cream carpet. Um, I'm talking like taking a sledgehammer, smashing up the furniture, smashing the windows, um, leaving the toilet seat up on purpose. Like, this is like proper minging, like brutal stuff. Um, and I just want you to imagine that for a second, so the utter devastation that we've caused in their home. And then imagine that they come back from wherever they've been staying and they see the damage that we've caused to their belongings and their property. How is that going to make them feel? And actually, what is that going to communicate to them about the way that we feel about them? I want to read this, uh, this verse from Psalm 24 that says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and its people belong to him. The earth is the Lord's, he created it, and everything and everyone in it belong to him. So actually how we treat creation communicates something of how we feel about God. And when we exploit creation and greedily drain the resources that nature so generously provides for us, and when we don't take care of creation, what does that communicate to God about what we, what we feel about him? If the, if the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, then how we treat it is massive. But when we treat the earth with love and care, it actually honors God, because we're caring for something that is his, that he has lovingly made. And actually, I think a massive act of worship is caring for creation, because when we look after creation, we're honoring the creator. And so that leads me on to my, um, my next point, actually. Um, which is creation care affects everybody. So I just want to look at that verse again, which says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, but I'm going to focus on the second part that says the world and its people belong to him. Actually, whatever, whatever happens to creation affects the people living in God's world as well. And that's actually something that um, Tim talked about last week is how much God cares for people living in creation. Um, and I, I think sometimes in the UK, I don't know about you guys, but I think it can be quite easy to um, actually ignore the damage that we're doing to creation because things like climate change and rising temperatures, at the minute, they're actually not affecting us that much. Um, it might be that we get a slightly hotter summer, which, to be honest, can be quite nice, really, can't it? Or um, we get the beast from the east and a slightly colder winter. But actually, as a country, we're prepared to deal with the, the impacts and the consequences of those, those changes in the weather. But for millions of people around the world, that just isn't the case. There's um, this quote from a Guardian article about climate change, which I really love, which I think is on the screen now, um, which says, climate change is occurring on all continents and in the oceans. It's driving heat waves and other weather-related disasters. But those who did the least to cause climate change will be the first in the line of fire. The poor and the weak and the communities are subjected to discrimination. The reality is that poor care for creation is going to hit the people that are already living in poverty and already suffering the hardest. And the Bible is jammed full of God's passion and actually his command to us to care for the poor. And if we take God's word seriously, we can't ignore that. I'm just going to look at two Bible verses and, and out of so many that um, communicate something of how God cares for the poor. Um, so the first one I'm going to look at is Proverbs 19, verse 17. It says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they've done. There's another one in Isaiah 1, uh, verse 17, that says, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, 
Take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. God calls us to care for the poor, and to do that, we have to care for creation. It's vital. I want to share this quote from uh, a guy called Dave Bookless, uh, who's actually the director of theology for um, Arosha International, which is a Christian organization that's uh, doing scientific research uh, and focusing on environmental education and actually looking at this issue of why um, God cares about creation and what we, how we should respond to that. Um, and I think this quote sums up really well um, some of the stuff that I've been saying. It says, If we are to worship God with heart, soul, mind and strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves, which are things that God calls us to do in the Bible, then we need to change our lifestyles radically. And this fact just blows my mind. So it says, at present, the average Briton uses such a large amount of the Earth's resources that we would need three planet Earths if everybody in the world wanted to live the same way. This is both an, both an issue of justice for the world's poor and an issue of worship, as this excessive consumerism is actually an idolatry of greed, pure spiritual cholesterol. I, when I read that, I was just like, wow, that is so challenging and shocking, but actually it's something that we really need to hear. The average Briton uses such a large amount of the Earth's resources that we would need three planet Earths to sustain that. And we're taking resources from other people who need them. So God's called us to care for creation. But I know actually that a lot of the stuff that I've just kind of unpacked really quickly there for you guys, it can, it can be quite overwhelming. I don't know if you guys find that. Um, often when I look at the news and I look at the impacts of climate change and uh, working at Tear Fund, we often hear about kind of the struggles that people are having because of climate change and poor care for creation. Um, it can be quite overwhelming. And we can ask that question, actually, what, what can I do about it? What difference can I make? Um, so what I want to say to you guys today is that I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I think it's really important to feel the weight of this, of this issue. But what I want to do is I want to invite you into this incredible mission that God has actually given us to care for creation. Um, and actually, that's really exciting that we can unpack as individuals, but also as a church, how we can respond to looking after the world that God's given us. Um, so I'm going to do that in a second. I'm just going to look at some really quick, practical ways that we can actually think about how can we respond to this call to care for creation. Um, and before I do that, I just want to recognize that I know some of the stuff I'm going to suggest, that might not be applicable to everybody, and actually that's okay. Um, the first step is actually just choosing to engage with this issue. It's choosing to recognize the beauty of the world around you and actually start to notice creation and think, wow, isn't it amazing what God's given us? And then it's asking God, what can we do in our own context, whatever that looks like, to protect and care for the planet? Great. So um, the first thing I want to say when we're talking about practical steps is that um, lots of small steps can create a massive change. So when we go, again, going back to talking about being overwhelmed, actually the first thing we need to do is just think of the first small step that we can take. And then all those steps together will build up and create massive big change. Um, yeah, so I think a really helpful thing that I just wanted to unpack for you guys before I start talking about the specific practical steps we can take um, is this idea, which I'm hoping I'm on the right slide. I am, good. Um, so this slide up here behind me, uh, it shows three examples of economies. And I think before we, before we start talking about anything else, it's really helpful to just understand this concept and frame everything else by this. Um, so if we have a little look, we've got the first one, which is the linear economy, and then we've got the recycling economy, and lastly, the circular economy. Um, so the linear economy is kind of the economy that we live in now. And it's this idea that we, we buy stuff, we use it, and then we throw it away. And it's really about kind of consumption, convenience, consumerism. It's a lot about what is best for me, what suits me best. I'm just going to buy it, throw it away, use it, and then throw it away. Um, and I think one of the facts that I thought illustrated this quite well is I think um, if we think about single-use items like disposable cups, apparently 7 million disposable cups are thrown away in the UK alone, which equates to 2.5 billion a year, which is just insane. But it's very much this idea of, yep, it's convenient for me, I've used it once, and now I'm going to throw it away. And actually, this economy, the linear economy, is causing massive damage to, the, to God's creation and to the planet. And then we've got the second economy, which is called the recycling economy. Um, so it's quite self-explanatory, this one. And I think we are kind of trying to move more towards this. And it's this idea uh, that we use stuff, 
and then we, we finish with it, and maybe we put it back into the system, we change it into something else, recycle it, upcycle it, but actually, eventually, it still ends up in the bin. So I think this is, recycling is a really great thing to be thinking about and doing, but actually, it's not the solution to this issue of caring for creation. And then lastly, we've got the circular economy, which um, I remember when I first heard this concept and understood what the circular economy was, I was just like, okay, this is it. And I, I got really excited because I was like, this is the solution that we need to be working towards. Um, and the circular economy is the idea that um, we use stuff and then we, um, we don't throw it away, actually. We keep it in the system and we keep reusing it. And it's sometimes we talk about this world sustainable, and that is kind of what the circular economy is all about. It's finding sustainable solutions that can just be reused and reused and reused and reducing our waste and that whole kind of throwing stuff away, the idea of that. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of unpack that a little bit for you guys. Um, I think the circular economy is amazing because actually it mirrors nature as well. If you guys think about um, a tree, for example, so a tree gets planted in soil and it grows up um, into a really beautiful plant and it's got all its leaves, uh, and eventually those leaves fall to the ground and they go back into the soil, they rot down, and they provide the nutrients for the tree again. And it's that idea of actually everything is reused, everything has a purpose, and it's all kind of working together and feeding each other, if that makes sense. Hopefully I've explained that well enough. Um, so that, I just wanted to unpack that for you guys really quickly, because I think that's a really important thing to understand when we think about caring for creation, um, that we're actually, what we're aiming towards is a circular economy. It's not the linear, and it's not even the recycling economy. It's this idea of the circular economy. Um, so just try and keep that uh, in your minds when I'm talking about the stuff we're about to move on to. Um, brilliant. If I can find where I am in my notes. So um, now we're going to take a little look at some of the simple steps that I chatted about, um, some of the practical things that we can do to care for creation. Um, so the first one I want to look at is transport. Um, and there's this fact here that says, transport contributes approximately 13% of total greenhouse gas emissions, of which CO2 is the largest part. Two thirds of that comes from road transport. And CO2 is one of uh, the greenhouse gases that is causing a massive amount of damage to uh, creation and the environment. Um, and it's something that we really need to be looking about how we can cut down our CO2 emissions. Um, and a really simple way we can do that is thinking about how we get around. Um, so it could be uh, choosing to walk or cycle instead of driving, if you can. Uh, or using public transport instead of uh, using your car. Or if it's applicable to you, um, it could be reducing the amount of long-haul flights we take, whether that's going on holiday or for work, if that's a possibility, um, that can make a huge difference. Um, so for me, a really simple example for you guys, um, I work up in London a couple of days a week, so I get the train to and from work, and it's about a 20-minute walk from the station to my house. Um, and sometimes I feel really tired and my legs are sore and I just want to be home and I don't want to do the walk home from the station. Um, but I have to really challenge myself and think, actually, no, I'm going to walk home from the station even when it's inconvenient for me and even when I'm tired and I'm not going to ask for a lift. And that's just one really simple thing that I think we can all think about in different parts of our life, how can we be more sustainable in the way that we get around. So that's the first one that I want you guys maybe to have a little think about um, in your own context. Um, the second one is another really simple step that we can take and it is eating less meat. And I feel like for some of you, this is like the world's worst nightmare, but I promise we can take it slow, like we're not all gonna have to go vegetarian straight away, don't stress. Um, so again, when I was researching, I came across this article which um, had a really interesting fact in it, and it said, avoiding meat and dairy is the single biggest way to reduce your impact on the planet. So apparently without meat and dairy consumption, global farmland use could be reduced by more than 75%. So that's an area equivalent to the USA, China, the European, European Union, and Australia combined, which is a massive, massive area. And we would still be able to feed the world. And actually, loss of wild areas to agriculture is the leading cause of the current mass extinction of wildlife. And if we look back to Genesis, actually that first call that God's given us was to rule over wildlife and creation and look after it. Um, and also deforestation, which is uh, largely caused by uh, land being cleared for farmland, um, is creating huge damage and huge problems uh, for creation. So again, thinking about small steps, um, it could be maybe that you go from, uh, that you have a meat-free day once a week, so like meat-free Monday or Friday or whatever day you want it to be. 
um, and then building up from there. So it doesn't, ha like I said, it doesn't have to be cutting meat out completely from your diet. It's just thinking, how can I start with those small steps and then build up? Um, so for us as a family, uh, we pretty much eat vegetarian. We do eat some meat sometimes, so we're not kind of really strict on it. Um, but actually, we really enjoy doing that. And there's so many great um, vegetarian alternatives to meat products. So, and apparently it's cheaper as well. I don't do this food shop, but this is what I hear. So um, yeah, good times. Um, great, so that's the second one, is eating less meat. And then the last thing I want to talk about, which um, I've kind of touched on a little bit, is thinking about how we can reduce our waste. Uh, so again, this goes back to the idea of the circular economy and thinking about how we can stop stuff going into that kind of bin of landfill and just being chucked away, um, especially things like single-use plastics, which are going to stick around on the planet for um, hundreds of years. Um, so actually, uh, last month, not last month, last year, I spent three months in Bangladesh with Tear Fund, the organization I work for now, um, and I was on an overseas volunteering trip there for three months. Um, which was a really incredible experience. Um, and I remember one day I was sitting in the house that I was staying in, and I was kind of going about my normal business. Uh, I think I was like taking my makeup off and uh, got my disposable wipe and threw it in the bin and didn't think any more of it. And I just was kind of went around with my day. Uh, and then I went, I went for a walk because I just I wanted to get out of the house, and I was like, I'm just going to go for a little walk around the community and have a little think. And I remember walking along and kind of looking down at the ground and seeing all the rubbish kind of strewn along the paths. And there was like sweet wrappers and crisp packets. Uh, and then as I was walking along, I suddenly spotted a bit of my rubbish. And I recognized it because I'd just used it that day and thrown it into the bin. And I had a realization, and I was like, oh my goodness, that rubbish that I put in the bin has literally been taken and has been chucked out into our garden in Bangladesh. And that is as far as it's going to go. And for me, that was a massive moment of realization of thinking, actually, when we talk about throwing stuff away, where is a way? Actually, stuff doesn't go away. Unless it biodegrades, it's going to be there for a long time. And for the rest of my trip in Bangladesh, I was really, challenge really challenged. And I actually thought, I'm going to stop using as many uh, disposable products as I can, because I don't want my makeup wipes to be in Bangladesh in 100 years' time. Like, I'm just not OK with that. Um, and for me, I think that was just a real t like a turning point in understanding, actually, the things that I throw away have a massive and a negative impact on creation. Um, and it's, it's exactly the same in the UK. We put stuff in our bin, and it gets taken away, and it's out of sight and out of mind. But to be honest, it's just gone to a landfill somewhere down the road. It's, it's not actually gone anywhere. And it's just going to be sitting around for hundreds of years, um, harming creation. Um, so I think, uh, actually, Tear Fund um, brought out a report quite recently which talked about the impact of plastic waste and again thinking about the impact that that has on people living in poverty um, and one of the facts was that up to a million deaths are caused by plastic waste each year and that can be from things like um, in a lot of developing countries uh, they don't have any formal waste collection so they just have to burn their rubbish or throw it um, like like I was talking about just throw it out into the garden or into the local pond or stream or river um, and when, when you burn plastic waste, it releases toxic fumes that are a huge issue in, in loads of countries around the world. Um, it also blocks up rivers, um, it contaminates water sources, and it um, attracts uh, rats and diseases and things like that. So it's causing huge issues for people living in poverty. And we're the lucky ones that our rubbish gets taken away and it doesn't affect us in that way. But it doesn't mean it's okay. Tackling our waste is about looking after God's creation, but it's also about caring for those living in poverty. So that's kind of all I wanted to say to you guys today. I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Um, hopefully uh, you guys feel challenged and feel a bit more equipped. And I just want to say that actually, this isn't everything that we can say about creation. There's so much more that we can say. Um, but it's the start of a journey that we want to go on together as a church. Um, so just to recap, God cares so much about creation, and he cares so much about the people living in it. And when we look after creation, we honor and worship God. And actually, it's just such a privilege to get to look after the incredible world that he's given us. Um, yeah, so now the time that you guys have all been waiting for. It's gift time. Um, so I'm going to invite uh, Tim up to the stage, and he's going to chat a little bit more about uh, one thing that we want to do as a church to bless you guys, but also encourage you to uh, join us in this mission of looking after creation. I think uh, 
before we uh, move on to gift time. Um, I don't know about you, but I was sitting there thinking, I think we should just pray. Is, is that okay? I'm excited about the gifts, but I just want to pray. So, Lou, will you pray for us? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Father, thank you so much for the incredible creation that you have given us. Thank you that it reflects your glory. Thank you that when we look at creation, we see your face and just your awesomeness and your, your size and your beauty and your wonder. God, I thank you that you have given us the privilege of looking after your planet. I pray that you would stir in our hearts a passion to take that responsibility seriously and show us uh, how we can do that practically, the practical steps that we can take. Yeah, God, I pray that you would just help us as we, as we strive to look after what you've given us. Um, help us when it's uncomfortable and when it's inconvenient and when it means we have to be radical, Father. Thank you that that's what you've called us to. Would we not turn away from that? Yeah, Father, we just invite you to help us. We can't do it without you. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your wisdom. We need your help. Amen. Amen. Lucy, thank you. <laughs> Lucy mentioned that as a church, we're, we're on a journey with us. In fact, we're working with our Russia, uh, looking at really how we can really be, as a church, how we can make things much more sustainable. So uh, we've uh, been looking at lots of different things, our energy sources, solar panelling. Uh, panelling. Uh, we've got some uh, fantastic new uh, cycle racks arriving, which also uh, are planters as well, so they double up. Uh, and lots of things like that. And one of the aspects that uh, we're looking at, I'm just going to hand to Tim and he's going to explain. Fantastic, great. The big reveal. Um, so one of, one of the things that um, uh, is huge for us as a church is, um, is single-use plastic uh, and uh, uh, disposable cups. So uh, every Sunday we enjoy coffee together uh, in Milano cups uh, that uh, actually, for the best will of the world, they, they kind of go into recycling, um, but I, they really don't get recycled properly at all. Um, and uh, I, it, it costs us a huge amount of money. So every, if you think 350 cups on a Sunday morning, but then uh, hirers and toddler groups and prayer nights and all sorts of things, it's a huge budget line for us. We spend um, well over £4,000 a year just on uh, disposable cups that are just going to go in the bin. Um, and so that's something that we can, we can change. You know, small steps make big change. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, uh, transition to not having disposable cups on a Sunday. And, and, and obviously that impacts all of us. And so what we thought we'd do is we wanted to give you a gift this morning. So for every single person here this morning, we have done a lot of research and we have got a beautiful cup for you. Woo! Um, we've got a video. I don't think we'll show it now. But... Um, so these cups are, they're actually made of recyc recycled um, cups. Uh, uh, they're completely guaranteed. All the parts, um, if, if, they, if they break, you can send them back and they'll fix them and send them back to you and stuff. So, and they're just really nice. We've tried lots of different ones over the last couple of months and we kind of, as a team, were like, do you know what? We think this one's the best. Um, and, um, and so we want to give, we've got them in different colours. So this is what we're going to do. You can't use them this morning because you need to take them home and, and wash them. But from next week um, and over the, uh, the next four weeks, we're going to encourage you to remember to bring your cup with you. Uh, um, as, as you get them this morning, straight after this meeting, before you pick up the kids, that's why we're finishing a little bit early, we've got a lovely team in the foyer who are going to give you a cup uh, and they're, they're going to mark on the bottom of your cup your, your name. Uh, and we're only doing that because if we have like 60 of these left on a Sunday morning, then we can just gather them up, wash them, have them on a table for the sun, following Sunday, and you can go, oh yeah, that one's mine. Um, so we want to give you this cup. And, um, and so for the next month, we're going to be giving them out, recognizing, you know, it kind of takes a while to remember to bring your cup. So for the next four weeks, we want to bring your cup, 
but we will have some disposable ones uh, just in case you forget. But we are heading towards, um, by the beginning of November, we are not going to supply any more disposable cups. Uh, and we're just going to have these. Yeah! Which might mean if you turn up on a Sunday and you forget, forgot it, you know, you might just not have to have a coffee. But, um, you know, unless you kind of like, we were thinking, do we do? But in actual fact, and if you're going to make a change, it's going to become, you know, you've got to just go all in or not at all. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so if uh, we're going to finish, and um, if you go out into the foyer, then we're